Hello, hello, my name is Sophia and this is a walkthrough to OSINT exercise 019. On my website, you can find a number of OSINT exercises to practice your skills. If you have not attempted to solve this one yet, you can find the link in the description and give it a go first. If you're here because you have completed, well done, I hope you had some fun. If you're here because you want to find out how to solve it, I hope you find this video useful. So welcome to OSINT exercise 019, task briefing. The text below is a partial transcript of a phone call in which you can only read one side of the conversation. Despite the text being completely fabricated for this exercise, the location described is real. Your task is to geolocate where the person was at the time of this fictitious phone call. I have marked this exercise level as hard for beginners and medium for experts. It's pure critical thinking. There's nothing else to help you. You just have to use your brain because it's 100% possible to find a location based on just a description. I've done it a few times. In fact, in one of my blog entries here, I briefly mentioned how I was asked to find where ISIS executed five people in a pool in 2015. At some point, I figured it had occurred in a US military base, but I still needed the coordinates, so I discovered an article that described the military base and I followed the breadcrumbs, tracked down the place, verified it all. It was a lot of fun. Love this one. Definitely got me on some list, so I do not recommend following my example. <laughs> anyway, let's solve this exercise. As explained, this is completely fabricated conversation. I created this text just for this exercise. Please do not contact or harass any people connected to this location, which is a real location. If you have not yet read the text, pause the video and do it now. I'm sure we all have better things to do than listen to me read the entire script. Okay, so now that you have read it, you'll know that there's a lot of very useful details in it. As mentioned on the task briefing, you can only read one side of the phone conversation, but that's enough. So let's organize the information so it all makes sense. So first, we'll start by finding out which is the country mentioned in the text. Afterwards, we'll try to find the city and finally, we'll go for the exact location within that city. We'll finish off by verifying that the details of the text completely match the location we found and its whereabouts. So let's bring in text number one. Look at that. Okay, so on this one, I highlighted all the hints to figure out the country. So let's analyze them. I'll refer to the person whose lines we can read as person A and the other one with the question marks, you can see all the question marks here, as person B. We don't know what person B is saying, but that's okay. We don't need that anyway. So person A says German is spoken here, wherever they are. So it says here, my German is handy after all. I know, but people still speak it here anyway. It's one of the languages. See, it says here, this phrasing, one of the languages, implies something. This is not just a language that people in the country can speak to help tourists or whatever. Like if you go to Portugal, almost everyone speaks English, but you wouldn't say that English is one of the languages of Portugal, would you? Because it's not. The phrasing one of the languages implies something. It implies that people there speak it because it's part of the country in some capacity. It is an official language, but not just an official language. It's one of the official languages. This tells us that we're looking for a country with more than one official language. We don't know how many, and that's fine, but we know that at least one of them is German. We can also tell that in this mystery location where person A is, German is not the main language spoken because person B tries to convince them to learn whatever other language they should speak. Look at the sentence here. I know, but people still speak it here anyway. This implies that German is not the expected language to be spoken there, although it is one of the languages. So what can we make out of all of this? We're looking for a country with at least two official languages, one of which will be German. We can already exclude Germany, which only has one official language, which is German. In addition to that, you would not act surprised to find out German was an official language in Germany. And like what we see here with person A, when they say, I told you it was one of the languages. You wouldn't say that about Germany. It would be absurd 
hard to tell someone, I told you that in Germany people speak German. It's expected. So we're looking at an expected yet official language. So if you go to Google and just search for list countries with German as an official language, you'll get this list of countries. So you have Austria, Belgium, Germany, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg and Switzerland. There's one thing that almost all of these countries have in common. They're all landlocked except for one. Well, technically except for two because Germany is also not landlocked, but we already ruled out Germany anyway. Of all the remaining countries, only one has a coast that meets the sea, which according to person A is an hour and a half from wherever they are. It is Belgium. Let's go to Belgium. Here you go, you can see here is the sea. Every other country on the list, except Germany and Belgium, are landlocked. And that was it, we found our country. Belgium has three official languages, it's Flemish, French and German. The majority of the country speaks either Flemish or French, depending on whether you are in the north or on the south. You can see this line here all the way. This is the divide and I can show you what I mean by just googling here map languages of Belgium. So let's look at it. There you go. That's it. It's divided. So you have Flemish, you have French, and you have German here on the blue section. And that is it. Simple enough. Let's go back to our exercise and our little picture. Here we go. So German is spoken and handy after all, as person A said, yet ideally you would still need to learn another language which person A claims they can learn whilst living there. Given the fact that we know that the location of person A is an hour and a half from the sea, there we go, you mentioned here, it is very possible that they're on the north of the country so the north of the country here, which has a coastal area connecting to the North Sea. So this is the North Sea, which means they'll be in the Flemish side of the country. And it's likely that it, that is the language that person B is persuading person A to learn. And in case you thought, what if the sea is an hour and a half, but in a different country, which is fair enough, people can easily cross borders in Europe. But let's think about this conversation. Person A claimed they were dropped off, see here at the top, meaning that they most likely don't have a vehicle and they seem to be updating someone on their situation. They're a bit unsure about their whereabouts when they say there's a river or something here. They're happy their German is useful after all, as they said here, meaning they were not sure that was going to be the outcome. The after all comes off as a relief that it worked out. It wasn't a certainty. They didn't say my German is handy. They said my German is handy after all. They acknowledge they don't speak the original language because they say they can learn it whilst living there. So this is someone who's just arrived in the country. It's unlikely they will be crossing borders while attempting to settle in. They even say they don't want to travel an hour and a half regularly. Crossing a border regularly after just arriving in a new place, it's not something that would make sense unless your business is cross-border smuggling. Great, so we have the country, it's Belgium. Let's figure out the city. I hope you're still following me. All these details are beautiful, I love it. So much information you can get from analyzing how things are phrased. Okay, so let's bring in text number two. Here we go. On this one, I have highlighted a bit which will help us determine which could be our mystery city. It states that is a safe city. Not helpful at all. And this is Belgium. All cities are probably safe. There's a train station and buses nearby, which is getting better. Buses are everywhere, but not train stations. It narrows down a bit, not by much. There are a lot of train stations in Belgium. We already know that we're an hour and a half from the sea. I also mentioned before how the fact that person A said they were dropped off probably indicates that they do not have a vehicle of their own. It makes sense as they seem to have recently arrived in the country, a detail we found out because they seem surprised about the language. So this hour and a half would probably be by public transportation, possibly these buses or trains which are nearby. You wouldn't be walking distance because you wouldn't refer to an hour and a half as a reasonable distance to walk, especially not on a regular basis. It's very likely that the hour and a half refers to how long you would take take a public transport route to go from person A's location to wherever cousin lives, which apparently is near the sea. And how do we know cousin lives near the sea? Look at this section towards the end. 
Person A asks person B where cousin lives here. Do you see that? And person B answers something which doesn't get transcribed. And person A replies with that's an hour and a half from here. Afterwards, it seems that person B tries to convince person A to still go visit cousin, to which person A says, I'm not that interested in seeing the sea. This implies that person B gave the seeing the sea as a good excuse to visit cousin. This conversation keeps going and person A puts a stop to it by saying, I promise I'll go there next weekend and give him your regards. At this point, they are still talking about the location of cousin and the sea. Person A even claims water is water. There's a river or something here anyway. Anyway, they are both connected literally the same water. We can infer by the conversation flow that this both here refers to the sea and the river or something. And this something is interesting. Why not just say there's a river here? Sometimes it's not clear when something is a river or not, especially for people who did not grow up in places with artificially created waterways, also known as canals, which is something you will see a lot in Belgium. Belgium. So it's safe to assume that this city either has a river or a canal. There's something there and that something has water. We know that. We also know that person A claimed they are both connected. Remember here? So in short, we know that person A is likely in a city with a river or a canal. That river or a canal <laughs> apparently connects to the sea. Since we know we're in Belgium, we can already extrapolate that we're talking about the North Sea, since this is the only sea nearby. We know that there's a city by the coast where cousin lives, which is an hour and a half from the location of person A. And we also know that this distance will most likely be calculated using public transportation. So we can check all of this out on the map. So I'm going to start zooming here and look at the area here by the coast because this is where we want to start and it's going to be an hour and a half from the coast. So we can start with the first one, we have Bruges and indeed it does have a canal or river or something, I know it is a canal though, that leads to the sea, so this is promising and if you go, there's another one, so Ghent, I think it's pronounced Ghent, I'm not sure, goes all the way there and yep it leads there which goes to the sea and if you go a bit more we have Antwerp which is the same leads to the sea. So we have three big options here. There's a few others but they don't really connect directly to the sea. So we're looking for a city that connects to the sea, there's a river, there's a canal, whatever on it and it is connected both the river or the canal and the sea. They're both connected. We know that. Okay, so now we can easily use Google Maps to figure out how long it would take to go from each of the cities to the coast. We don't know exactly where cousin lives though, which might pose a problem, a small problem though, we can work with it. So we can start by calculating how long it would take someone on a normal weekday to go from Bruges to the coast. Okay, so to calculate from Bruges to the coast, we'll just get from here to here or something. I guess it's as good as any and it cannot be leaving now because this is very late in the evening on a Sunday. So let me just put this on a normal time. I don't know, 11 a.m. on a Monday. I guess that's as good as any and it says it's about an hour. Depends on if you go around or not. So straight line, it would take almost an hour from Bruges to the coast. And let's check now the next one. So let's go with Ghent and look at that almost exactly an hour and a half. Very, very promising. So let's obviously test the last one, although it's going to be too far, isn't it? So almost three hours. So that's quite a lot. As I explained before, the person would probably not be crossing the border for a regular visit to the cousin. Not that they agree to it either way. It is therefore very unlikely that by coast they meant this one up here, which is already in Dutch territory. So you can see here, this is the border with the Netherlands. Instead, it is very likely that they meant the West Coast. So this one here, which we just tested. So our top choice at the moment is Ghent. Here we go, Ghent. Antwerp is far too far and Bruges is way too close. So let's close this and we're going to 
zone in Ghent and bring in text number three. Here we go. On this screenshot, I highlighted all the clues for our location within the city. Person A says they're near a train station and buses. They also mentioned there's a river or something here. We don't know if they mean here as in the city or here as where they are. There's a mention of a carpet, which is helpful. Not everywhere has a carpet. For example, we know we're not looking for a supermarket or a hospital. They're most definitely not carpeted. The person mentioned that the place made them feel like they should have brought swimming shorts. This is such a weird thing to say. Why would you think of swimming shorts in a carpeted location? When I think of swimming gear, I think of a beach, pool or some paradise island somewhere, not somewhere with a carpeted floor. But look at this. Immediately after person A mentioned the swimming shorts, person B says something that made them apologize and say they will be more respectful. This is a place that demands respect. A place with prayers. Look at that. And not just a prayer, the prayers. This is a very interesting phrasing, isn't it? When you hear the word prayers, you think of a place of worship, a church, a mosque, a synagogue, etc. But only in one of these options, you would say the words the prayers. And that's a mosque. In a church, you'd refer to it as the mass or the sermon. In a synagogue, you would call it the service. Mosques have prayers. They also have carpeted floors. So we're looking for a mosque in Ghent. Let's do this. We're so close now. Okay, so in Ghent, let's search for the word mosque. Here we go. That's it. Just mosque. So it seems that Ghent does not have that many mosques, which is great. And you can see them all here on the list. And you can just scroll a bit. And I hope you spotted it. I really hope you spotted it. But I'm going to zoom in. Da -da 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 -da. Where is it? Was it up? Was it down? I really lost it. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Oh my God. Okay, look at this amazing carpet. What does it remind you of? Hopefully a pool, because that's exactly what I thought when I first saw it. Look at it. Seriously cool carpet. Would this carpet make a person think that they should have brought their swimming shorts? Who knows? People are confusing. But person's A comment would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? So at this point, there's a very strong reason to believe we got the right place. But as always, let's verify this with the information we have. Is this location near a river or something? Let's look at it because look at that. So that's the one. Oh my God, I'm zooming so much. Okay, yes, look at that. Here's the canal. Here's the mosque. Is this near a train station? Yes, look at that. Put it here you go. God, actually, it's zoomed out. Okay, here it is. This is a train station. I don't know what's the quality shit. Sorry about the cursing. Okay, is this a place where you would pray? Yes, absolutely. It is a mosque. Is this carpet new? Let's find out. So in the Google Maps gallery of photos, my God, this is a lot. Okay, let me zoom out again. Sorry about that. So you have a lot of photos. You zoom all the way down. All the carpet is exactly the same, but that's fine. We can work around it. Look at this. If you scroll down on this section here, all the way down, you will see something very, very useful. And here it is. Quite often you'll find social media pages or websites associated with the location. So at the top of the list, you can see here, this is a Facebook page. So let's open because I click everything. <laughs> and what we see here, it is a different carpet. So different carpet than the one on the picture here. In fact, if you check out the Facebook page gallery or whatever they're called, you'll even be able to establish when they changed the carpet. So new carpet, old carpet, and they were doing a lot of stuff around the carpets or at least around the floor, I don't know. And this settles it. All the details match. This location is near a train station and buses. So there's a lot of buses nearby. I forgot where they were, but yeah, okay, here you go. Bus stations everywhere or bus stops, whatever you call it. It is an hour and a half from the sea. It is located in a country with German as an official language, yet not spoken in this specific region. And it is a place of worship with a new carpet that may remind people of a pole. So the correct answer to OSINT exercise 019 is most 
mosque Okba ibn Nafi. I have no idea how to pronounce this either, but that's fine. And this mosque is located, as we've seen, in Ghent, Belgium. I hope you had fun geolocating something with just a short text and a lot of critical thinking. Between you and me, sometimes you don't even need a text. If you pay enough attention to when people are talking, they very often give very useful information without realizing. I have discovered locations and found out a lot of very interesting things about people by just memorizing details, noticing how they were phrasing things and connecting all the dots. Also, people disclose a lot of information when they're trying to avoid saying something. Sometimes it's less about what you say and more about what you don't want to say. Anyway, I don't want to sound too creepy. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Leave a comment saying, you're not creepy, Sophia. I will be your friend. Anyway, thank you for listening till the end. Bye-bye.